Good evening, everybody. Um, we are reconvening to open session of the regular meeting of the Fairview District 72 Board of Education. It is April 17th at 7.01 p.m. We have already established that we have a quorum. I would like to ask all members of the public to please be respectful of everyone at this meeting. Ensure that you have silenced your cell phones and please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the March 20, 2024 um, closed session meeting minutes, please? So moved. I'll second. <laughs> Any corrections or comments to the minutes? Nope. Okay. Well, all those in favor of approving the minutes of March 20, 2024, say aye. 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 Anyone um, who opposes, say nay. Perfect. Minutes are approved. And next, we have the approval of the payments of bills. May I have a motion and a second to approve the payment of the bills in the amount of one million one hundred and thirty-eight thousand six hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So moved. I'll second. Any questions? Did you need to say anything? No. Okay. Would the board secretary please call a roll call vote? Diana Diakakis. Yes. Rafael Cavor. Yes. Saji Phillip. Yes. Christine Soika. Yes. Estera Tamuda. Yes. Bills are approved. And we're going to go to the Parent Teacher Association report. Do we have a representative today? Hi. I'm going to try talking slow because I always come up here and get really anxious and then I forget what to say. So um, we've had a really slow, um, or actually not much going on this past month between spring break. It's been kind of quiet um, going forward. It's going to be jam-packed. We've got a lot of fun things going on. Um, I know that our spring clubs that the PTA that has sponsored has started, so a big thank you to the teachers who stay after school and actually during their time off during the day to um, get the kids in to do the clubs because I know a lot of the children do love it. I also want to thank the admin. I know we throw a lot of things at you guys always. Um, thank you guys for being so generous with us. Sometimes we ask for impossible things and you guys make possible, so I do appreciate that. Um, our upcoming event is actually starting this week. We have our um, support staff breakfast this Thursday, April 25th. On Friday, April 26th, it's um, no school, but it's also our teacher appreciation luncheon, so thank you teachers. We can't wait to celebrate you guys. Next week, April 29th to Friday, May 3rd, we have teacher appreciation week. Um, one of our funnest nights is happening on Friday, May 10th. That's our multicultural night that we can't wait. Um, and then our next general PTA meeting will be Tuesday, May, four, May 14th at 7 p.m. Thank you. All right, we are moving on to school activity report. Does anyone from the board or administration have any good news they'd like to share? Hi, good evening. I just wanted to um, celebrate our kindergartners. They had an awesome concert yesterday. Mr. Clift and those students put on an awesome show um, for their first time ever performing up on stage. We have first grade tomorrow. And then just a plug and a shout out for STEM night, family STEM night, K-8 on Thursday. Uh, Mr. Lays and all of our science teachers will be helping to coordinate from 5 until 7 tomorrow night. Uh, some, I just want to echo what Ms. Guliana said. I think that from spring break to the start of fourth quarter is kind of a lull. And then you look at the May calendar and it's like, holy cow. But um, we are starting to really focus on our eighth graders and uh, making sure we celebrate them. So they recently were given the materials for the Louis Blumenfeld Award, which is an award that's unique to eighth graders, self-nomination award to be able to um, uh, receive a nice monetary uh, don't, or award if they win it. Um, so we have a team of teachers that looks at their application, and so that started with them. Uh, there's a welcome uh, wolf pack event at the high school tonight, so families were invited there. So right now it's a lot of eighth grade things that are going on, which is really exciting, um, but there's also a lot going on throughout the building. So I'm sure there'll be a lot to report back on in, in May. Thank you. 
So thank you. I will just add, since Mrs. Gonzalez is in the audience and the board may not have the opportunity to attend, um, Bernadette is retiring at the end of this year and she has had an amazing career here. Um, I, I wasn't prepared to talk too much about Bernadette because I didn't know she was attending this illustrious board meeting, but we will be having a retirement tea on May 23rd. I hope that you will attend. It's open to the entire community. Um, we're expecting to see a lot of former teachers, a lot of former students who had Bernadette. Um, and just really looking forward to honoring her um, that afternoon um, in a really special Fairview way. So Bernadette, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is just the beginning. <laughs> so Bernadette, we have a thing with Bernadette that she starts crying and then the person next to her starts crying and the next person and, and it just goes. So. Um, that's just how it goes. We know this about all of us, <laughs> um, but please join us that afternoon if you can. It should be a really fun event, so just put that plug in. So anything else from board members? I do have one other thing then. Um, Mrs. Soika and Mrs. Diakakis have commented, and I think the principals deserve a shout out for this, on your um, Friday backpack newsletter. Um, it is you know, it's great for me to hear from the parent community, but it is such a vast improvement over what we've done in prior years. It's user friendly. The photos, I, personally, I love the photos and they're not my kids, but um, you know, you do a really, really good job on it. And I don't, I know it's a lot of work, um, but I think the community appreciates it. Um, we were talking about it at some point in the last couple of weeks and I said, oh, we got it. We have to say something to the principals about that because they don't always hear that. So. Thank you guys for a job well done. All right, we're gonna move on to board discussion. Would the superintendent please introduce the reports? Yes, um, Mr. Fair is going to provide the annual insurance and wellness committee report. Um, the insurance and wellness committee is a collaboration with the teachers union and the administration in an effort to promote wellness in our district, um, but also to examine our health insurance costs um, and to try to um, help, you know, keep those costs in check. Insurance is something that has really, um, you know, gone wild <laughs> over the last decade. Um, and so, you know, we've really taken the approach that healthy teachers will help um, our insurance numbers. Um, and we've had a lot of fun with it. So um, Jeff is gonna walk you through um, some of the activities that the committee has um, promoted this year, so. Thank you, Dr. Whitaker, thank you, board. So tonight we're just doing a yearly, our yearly review of everything going on with the committee for the year, including our insurance renewal and also the activities, as Dr. Whitaker mentioned, uh, that we do as a committee. And technical stuff, you use the arrows, I got it, I gotcha. I gotcha. There are the members of our committee this year, so a, a good cross-section of individuals that are at our, of our school, and a number of people who have been on there for a, quite a long time. Mrs. Hilgendorf, who is a, Mrs. Hilgendorf has been a, uh, her experience, her past experience in insurance has helped us immensely in getting the message out to our staff members who may not know as much about insurance, namely a lot of our young staff members who are just new with, uh, having insurance, so it's nice to have a, a well-versed member of the committee. And over time, you know, a number of these people, I, I know Ms. Klein has been on there for quite a long time, Mr. Stoneberg, Ms. Larkin, uh, it's good to have this group, and it's gotten larger too. Uh, we was we adding people because people want to be involved, and that's good to hear. Ms. Malad joined her this year, and she was just effusive in praise for the committee and everything that, she, that, we, that we've done, so that's, it's good to hear that from a staff member that wanted to join. So this started back in 2013, it's the 10th, oh, it's the 11th year already. Uh, first of all, it was looked at for looking at our health insurance plans. At the time, we were going through what was called the Cadillac plan uh, era, when it was possibly gonna be forced down our throats as far as having expensive plans and being taxed add on to that. Um, we then evaluated certain areas for cost savings. So we looked at our plan designs and said, is there areas that we can save, have cost savings if we hit a certain increase? Uh, we also wanted to educate ourselves and the staff on the, not only the changing face of insurance, but also wellness, because wellness over the last 
10 years has become a big part of our insurance cooperative, which is Educational Benefit Cooperative. It's a 120 school district uh, buying a cooperative that helps people pool together resources in order to get purchasing power. Uh, we also pr promote active participation in insurance and wellness activities and also creating a spirit of wellness in the school. We have the Falcon Fit mantra now, which we'll, we'll have our new sweatshirts coming out here soon. The current state of insurance. Uh, so this is, it's been a rough few years. Uh, namely due to COVID. Uh, we like to say that the, the face of education, it's nice every year, you have the same cyclical things happen. And that was the same way in the insurance market for education uh, staff members. You have people going to get procedures in the summer and winter break, and you kind of knew when things were gonna happen. Well, COVID threw that for a loop, and our projections that we had for insurance were all over the place. The first year of COVID, we saw a steep decline in our insurance renewal rates. Since then, it's, been, it's crept upward and upward. This year, we have a 9.3% increase for our PPO plan and a 7.8% increase for our HMO plan. I've also included the five-year and 10-year lookbacks for those numbers. Uh, these, are, these are actually less than they were last year, uh, but we are seeing right now in the early numbers for the next year that these rates should come down because they are, it looks like things are returning to that cyclical nature when it comes to insurance claims. We are seeing the main driver right now is the increasing cost of prescriptions and medications for plans. This is a huge, huge thing, part of our plan. It's a huge cost difference, and it's changed things a little bit. Also, we've seen huge costs for uh, cost of providers. So we're seeing a huge jump with um, high cost claims. So we have insurance with our cooperative to cover any high cost claims. When I say high cost claims, I'm talking about things that could happen that drive costs upwards of a million dollars. But we have insurance that helps us mitigate some of that cost but we're seeing a lot more of those incidents now. Uh, we also are seeing em emerging issues, such as gene therapy and things that are, are good for the advancement of medicine, but are becoming costly and we're wondering how they're gonna pay for it. Uh, the pooled burden of all this helps, so if we go out to market right now with other insurance providers, we would see a much higher increase based on our, our experience. But because we're part of this pool, it mitigates some and lessens some of that cost. So on to the, the more fun stuff, because increased insurance costs isn't great. Um, but we've had seen increased participation in our wellness screenings. We just got word today that it's the ninth year in a row we've met the 50% threshold for having employees participate in our wellness screening, which is fantastic. So thank you, everyone here. Uh, we've provided workouts. We did provide workouts, and it seems like everyone's life got really busy, and everyone started having kids, and then no one could get up in the morning to go to workouts anymore. But for the longest time, that was something that we provided, and we're trying to provide again. We've had education se sessions on our insurance. Like I said, the Falcon Fit, we've kind of adopted that as our wellness mantra. Uh, we have a kickoff competition every year and breakfast, and that's no different this year. We have Wellness Wednesday coming up. Wellness Wednesday is gonna be an event that's pr pr uh, really run by our SEL team in collaboration with our wellness team and pr providing activities for staff during the day. Random Acts of Coffee, which is now in its third year, has been a, a welcome, welcome, um, thing for our staff, getting coffee on a random day to our coffee fairies, is that what we're calling the coffee fairies? Um, and then we changed the plan design last year to achieve future savings. Of course, we're not seeing that this year, right after we make the plan design change, but we are hoping that over the long term that does, that does help. Every year, in order to, uh, there's a certain threshold we have to meet in a number of different categories, and what, we, what happens is we get a wellness premium payback from our cooperative. We have to hit a certain number. It used to be three simple things. They've since made it 15 different things that we have to hit in order to get a percentage of our premium paid back every year. A part of that is participation in the wellness screening, which we've hit. Another thing is to offer a new activity every year. And that's been part of the difficulties is trying to add something new every year, especially when we've had a lot of things that have become staples. This year, our committee came up with the Tour de Fairview. Uh, we were trying to find ways to get people out in the building because people hate walking down to the new district office. If we, had a, if we had a jar where you had to put a quarter in every time you complained about the length of time it took you to walk to the new district office, we'd be able to fund a new wing in the building. Uh, but this was a way, and uh, Ms. Klein, Ms. Hilgenorf, Ms. Larkin, all were part of this um, effort to get people out in the building, so we made a, a route inside the building for people to do laps. And people in their free time would do laps around the building and count their laps at the end of two weeks. 
And then the last day, we also had a um, French-inspired breakfast provided by Ms. Kempf and the kitchen staff. So it was a lot of fun, and it's probably something that will come back in future years, so which is nice to do. We've also added this year a wellness scorecard, which is trying to get people to participate in all of the different activities that we do. Um, so there's six different things on there to, to participate in. So it's, um, I, I'm really thankful for the committee and all the work they've, they've done. I'm thankful for the board that they've allowed us to reinvest uh, the monies that we get from our premium payback back into this program because I really think it, like, it, it's, a, it's a big positive for our staff. And it's another unifying factor of the, the one, one fair of you type uh, mantra that we do have. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up is the superintendent's report, and I'll just touch upon a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, over the past month, um, we have been interviewing candidates for the K-4 principal position. Uh, I was really happy that we not only had board participation in the interviews, we had parent participation. Sylvia, thank you for being a part of it. Katie and Sylvia joined the process as PTA co-presidents. Um, and then we had a staff committee um, that included administrators, support staff, teachers. Um, so it was a really, really excellent process. Um, and I'm excited to have a recommendation for the board to approve tonight. But thank you, everybody who participated. It's important to me that your voices be heard in that process. Um, it's such a critical position for our school. Um, number two, the Fairview Spring Edition should have hit your mailboxes by now. Um, so there's a lot of good information in there. Hopefully you all receive that. Um, thirdly, um, while the PTA is helping co-sponsor some clubs at the school, we're also partnering with the Skokie Park District to offer some additional clubs. Um, kind of a pilot program to kind of see how it goes, um, but we're hoping that that is something you know, we had heard from parents that they were looking for more options for kids to do after school than just what we were offering. Um, and so the Park District has been you know, really great about wanting to come in and help support that. So we're starting small. Um, I think we have four after school clubs through the Park District. Um, really creative things that are different than what we've been able to offer before. And if it goes well, we would plan on continuing to supplement our sort of Fairview clubs with these Park District clubs going forward. So we're really excited about that partnership. Um, and those, those are just some of the highlights. If there are any questions from board members about the report, I'm happy to take questions or comments. No? Okay. All right, next up is our board committees and representatives. Um, Raphael, any updates on the Ed Red? So not many updates. Just uh, last Wednesday they had the, um, it was the first ever advocacy day which was down in Springfield, Illinois, where uh, you got to meet legislators, sit in legislative sessions. I unfortunately wasn't able to go due to work travel, uh, but I'm looking forward to being able to attend that the next time. Um, there's a summit coming up that they're having in June as well, um, so I'll definitely be attending that. Um, and But yeah, besides that, not much updates. And I know Jackie is not here today, but do we have any updates for NTDSC? I know she attended the meeting, um, but I'm sorry, I don't have a report to share with you, but we could catch up on that next month. And then Christine, any additional updates for PTA? Nothing more than Sylvia mentioned, um, except that the Teacher Appreciation Week is gonna be, I think, really uh, nice. So I'm looking forward to having all the teachers celebrated. I know they put in a lot of effort um, in getting something each day set up, so that's exciting, but nothing more to add. All right, uh, regarding Freedom of Information Act requests, I can report that there were two Freedom of Information Acts received since the last board meeting and they were responded to as required. And we do not have any information items or correspondence this month. Okay, we're gonna move on to public comment. At this time, I'd like to invite members of the audience to address the board in public comment. The public comment period is designed to gain input from the public and not for immediate responses by the board to the question or comments presented. If you wish to address the board, please come to the microphone and state your name. A three minute time will be set. The board secretary will keep the time. Okay, and there are also no online comments for today. All right, we are going to move on. Um, may I have a motion and a second to approve the following consent agenda items? So moved. I'll second. Okay, we have three. 
Um, approve intergovernmental agreement between District 72 and the Skokie Public Library. Approve consolidated district plan applications for fiscal year 25. And adopt the resolution reaffirming transportation hazardous areas. Any questions or comments before we? I'll just make a quick comment about each. The intergovernmental agreement with the Skokie Public Library allows us to um, collaborate with the library on different projects. Jordan has done several projects with the library, but it also allows us to share information so that students can be issued library cards, um, which is a real benefit, we believe, to our students. So having the agreement in place is um, valuable for a variety of reasons. Um, and we are currently in an intergovernmental agreement. It's just an updated agreement. There's really nothing new there. The consolidated district plan um, for fiscal year 25 is a requirement by ISBE, the State Board of Education. So in order to make our grant application requests for funding, we have to have a plan in place. And so it's my responsibility to submit the plan annually. Um, and one of the new things that have been added to that plan is that it must be approved by the Board of Education. Um, so that's that. And then finally, um, this one is an annual uh, a resolution reaffirming transportation hazardous areas. So this has to do with our transportation of students and it's really affirming that Tui Avenue is a dangerous um, street and intersection and so it allows us um, to transport students who are beyond Tui, et cetera. Um, so it's just something, again, that we have to do annually um, to be able to access that type of funding. So. Just no a quick, quick rundown. No okay. questions? Are you sure? Okay. All right. Will the board secretary please call roll call vote? Diana Diakakis? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Astera Tamuda? Yes. Perfect. All right. We are moving on to our action items. Um, we're going to start with the approval of the K-4 principal, Karen Chavoka, for her contract. Um, any questions or comments before we move on? Okay. Will the board secretary please call a roll call vote? Yep. May I have a motion and a second, please, to so approve moved. the K-4 principal, Karen Chvoka's contract? So moved. I'll second. Okay. Will the board secretary please call a roll call vote? Diana Diakakis? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Estera Tamuda? Yes. Perfect. And I will just mention um, we will invite uh, Ms. Chavoka to one of our next board meetings so that you can meet her. We will plan an opportunity for our staff to meet her as well as our parent community. Um, we will be um, holding off on an announcement um, because she is a current principal in a neighboring school district, and so she wants to have the opportunity to talk with her staff. Um, so there won't be an official announcement coming out from my office until probably midday tomorrow, um, just out of respect to allow her to be able to have that process and closure at her, at her current building. So thank you. All right, may I have a motion and a second to approve the employment of certified teachers, Phoebe Rudman and Alan Park for the 2024-2025 school year? So moved. I'll no second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Nope. All right. Will the board secretary please call a roll call vote? Diana Diakakis? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Estera Tamuda? Yes. Perfect. All right. Final. May I have a motion and a second to accept the resignation of certified staff members Martha Gale and Rebecca Lynch? So moved. I'll second. Okay. Will the board secretary please call roll call vote? Diana Diakakis? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Estera Tamuda? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, any items for future consideration? Just for the members of the public and community that are here, um, we are going to be re-looking at our June board meeting date um, because there are a couple of conflicts. So um, we'll be publicizing that once we've come to a June date, um, but it will likely not be June 12th, um, which is where it's sitting on the calendar right now. So just for those of you who come to every meeting, I don't want you to be caught by surprise with that. Um, so we are gonna, amongst ourselves, try to figure out a, a, a good date for everybody, um, and we will let that be known as soon as we have it. Perfect. 
Um, may I have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting of Fairview Board of Education at 7.25 p.m.? So moved. Oh, I'll second. Will the Board Secretary please call roll call vote? Diana Diakakis? Yes. Raphael Kavor? Yes. Saji Phillips? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Estera Tamuda? Yes. All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.